Hello, welcome to this week's reading vlog. I read a total of this many books this week. Now, in last week's vlog, you might have noticed that I said I read seven books and then I talked about six. I promise I do no math. I just forgot to mention <laughs> This Enchanted Life by Sharon Blackie, which I have read as part of my vlog for March book club, but I will include my little synopsis in here, but I will not tally it to this week's count of books. And without much further ado, let's get reading. Hello, so I just finished reading The Enchanted Life by Sharon Blackie. This is for my reading vlog, so I will not talk about it here, but I have finished this book. You right there, babe? You gonna come out? You gonna come out of there? Hello, what's she doing? What's she done, Will? Hey, Nova. Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> Willow. Hey, Nova. So I just had some devastating news. I uh, found out that dark chocolate is incredibly high in lead and cadmium. Supposedly a lot of chocolate bars and companies had their products tested and they exceeded what's considered to be safe level of lead and cadmium. Um, as someone who was a vegan for 30 years and literally lived off dark chocolate, it was a bit bit upsetting to learn. Obviously, moving forward, I always I try to minimize the amount of heavy metals as much as possible. Obviously, in things like fruits and vegetables, there's going to be trace amounts. It's grown in soil. I don't have to eat dark chocolate. That's like a choice. I'm probably going to stick to white chocolate. Uh, that was reportedly the lowest. Um, but even things like cacao had high amounts. So even like baking, I'm going to have to just do less of um, because I just really don't want to be consuming lead. If I don't have to. So who knew that uh, cocoa farmers were the real lead farmers? But yeah, you think you're doing something good for your body and it turns out you're just giving yourself heavy metal poisonings. <laughs> but I just thought I'd let you know in case it's something you want to look up as well and see which candy bars have the least amount of these heavy metals in them. The books that I read this week, he should have been with me. Okay, so I am clearly not the intended audience for this. This is YA, but this is YA where the teenagers bang. So uh, yeah, it's it's definitely not for me. I did not enjoy it. I'm not going to read it because if I did read it, I'd probably give it a 1.75. I just found the writing to be so basic. It was in the point of view of the main character, Autumn. <laughs> didn't really care for her and her love interest, her long childhood friend whom she's secretly in love with, Finny, her other boyfriend, the guy that she just, you know, is dating for two years but you know secretly in love with the other dude this whole time i just hope i know this is for teens i just hope that teenagers do not look at this story and think oh my god it's so romantic or think that's what real love is and i hope i have a relationship like this to stay no oh my god so unhealthy and and then like the whole thing about this book the reason i picked it up and the reason i pushed through is because i'd seen a lot of youtubers like crying crying tears and i thought okay okay maybe something happens even though with this book in the beginning you sort of learn what happens at the end so i was like okay we've sort of already been told what happens that sort of takes away the punch of the emotional hit but maybe through the writing or the character development or something else we really get hit in the feels when it comes to this point where we are at the beginning but no no so what you find out from the start, it is just you feel the same at the end. And then the author goes and tries to do like plot twist and throws in these very typical tropes that have been done a thousand times. It's like, I'll throw this one in and then I'm going to throw this one in. And it just was like, it just fell so flat. I just felt nothing. I'm like, <laughs> I don't care. You can add something else in. You can give somebody else cancer and have them die. I don't care at this point. Like I said, it was just, just so boring. I was bored. I was bored. I felt for Jamie. Autumn's boyfriend, long-suffering boyfriend, whom she was never really that into. She tried to delude herself into thinking she loved him. We all knew. We all knew she just didn't didn't have those feelings for him, but she kept stringing him along because, you know, she wasn't with Finney. But then when Finney became an option, it's like, oh, it's always been Finney. It's always been him. But he was so boring as well. Everyone was just pretty boring in this book and don't know why people were crying. But like I said, it's not a healthy situation. It's not a healthy relationship things that Autumn does at the end, it's like, come on, come on, man. Like, this is ridiculous. This kid needs a therapist. 
this kid needs some adults to intervene and talk to her and help her guide her through her emotions before she makes any more brash decisions. It'd be, it'd be less than two stars if I was going to rate it. But like I said, I'm not going to rate it because it's not for me. It's for teenagers. And I'm not a teenager. The next bud. <laughs> bud. The next book I read is Nevermore, The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. So this is a middle grade book. I will discuss it more in my kids corner segment next month, but I did give this 4.25 stars and the main character Morrigan is very, very reminiscent of Wednesday Adams. So naturally I adored the heck out of this. And yeah, like I said, I'll talk about it more in my kids corner segment. It is a hefty book for a middle grade book though. The next book I listened to was The Book Eaters and I gave it three stars. And the only reason I persevered with this was because it was an audiobook and none of the other audiobooks I reserved were ready for download yet. And so I pushed through, but I wish I hadn't because even though the premise was fascinating about this sort of type of creatures that were placed on this world by the creator to absorb knowledge, it just fell real flat because the main character is Devon and her child. So in this world, in the book eaters world, there's like main families and they've been around for centuries and they try to limit their, their interaction with humans, although some participate in the slave trade and all that sort of thing. They eat books and absorb the knowledge, although some, there are some of their kind that are mind eaters and they literally eat brains of human beings and then absorb the personality and memories of those human beings. And their structure is very patriarchal. The women are just passed around like brood bears to each of the families to produce children. And then they're taken from the children so they cannot see the children ever again after the age of three. And it's not really explained why. So why can the mothers not stay with the children? Why are the children raised by the women of the father's household who've also had their own children, but obviously can't raise them? I don't understand, it's not explained. So with this book, it's about the whole premise of as a mother, what lengths would you go to to protect your child? And those lengths could possibly turn you into a monster. So I get it, I get that. But you don't, you don't like her, you don't like her child, you don't like any, any of the book eaters, except maybe Jaro, he's kind of cool, and his sister is kind of cool, I think her name is Victoria. But everybody else, oh, I did not care for them. I just kept hoping Sam and Dean would come and just wipe them out. Because it, it was just, I'm like, who am I supposed to be rooting for here? Like, I, I'm actually like upset about all the humans that are being killed, including little babies. That doesn't feel great to me. Um, you don't really, there's not enough given information given to really root for them. You don't know about their purpose. You don't know why they're here. You don't know why they do the things they do. I don't know, man. It just felt like a bit of a waste of time. And I was in it too to find out what happened to Salem. I won't tell you who Salem is, but I really wanted to find out what happened to Salem. Do we find out what happened to Salem? No, we don't. No, we don't. All that. And I still don't know what happened to Salem. So yeah, it just wasn't for me. Like I said, I did not care about the characters. There wasn't enough like world building and like explanation of how things worked and why, why they worked that way, why they were structured that way. So yeah, it was a bit of a letdown because like the, the premise just sounded so fascinating. Hello. Hello, so today I was doing a 24 hour readathon. So I'm just gonna quickly tell you what I've read, but I will discuss my reviews in the readathon vlog. But I read The Branded by Joe Riccioni, Riccioni. I have given this 4.75 stars, did not see it coming. This really took me by surprise. I loved the story. So that's that one. I read Revenants by Adam Aitken. This is a series of poems. Wasn't really for me. The High Mountain Court, called something like that. And I gave that three and a half stars. It was okay. Pretty stock standard fantasy fae sort of thing. Very reminiscent of Akatar. Um, but it was still enjoyable. I still enjoy myself. So yeah, that was three and a half stars. Then I read Better Than the Movies. And this was quite surprising. It is YA normally don't like YA especially if it's just contemporary YA but this was so sweet and chaste and cute and it's just reminiscent of all those teen movies from my past 10 things I had about you she's all that all of them and I think I gave it 4.25 stars <laughs> I've already forgotten what I gave it but I had a great time I was laughing I was crying so that was that one and those are the books that I have read so far on my readathon challenge it's closed so I read Kokoro, or Kokoro um, by Lafcadi O'Hearn. I decided to DNF this. It was written in 1894 and it's just, yeah, it's just too dense for me and I couldn't get into it. 
So I did do enough this. I did do enough this as part of my red thumb. So I just read Feng Shui by Sky Alexander as part of my readathon. I can't really read it. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's just it's a book on Feng Shui. It's very basic, but it's exactly just what I wanted. I just wanted the bare bones. Just tell me what I can do today to um, help with the Feng Shui of my house, and this uh, did the job. So read this one. Too many cabbage moths in my garden. Is that one i read how i killed my family i hated this book just flat out hated it gave it one and a half stars then i read prince of seduction which is a prequel and ruined the other book for me <laughs> gave this 2.75 stars sometimes you don't want to know more about a certain character sometimes it's better to make them a bit more of an enigma in this case it was then i read sex sacred sex and i gave this 3.25 stars it was more about sex magic and with crap witchcraft so it just wasn't really my thing what not what i was expecting it to be about and then i read the poison season and i gave this 2.75 it's a ya book about an inbred island <laughs> that like to send their children off to the mainland at 12 years of age to fend for themselves and just a whole lot of stupidity that was that one then i read crying in h mart i gave this three stars uh it just wasn't my thing it was a bit long it made me so hungry there should be a disclaimer at the front, like, do not read while hungry. You will have a bad time. Please, if you're going to read that book, have some yummy food. Even better, have some yummy Korean food in front of you. Then I DNF'd Lady of Darkness. Hoo boy, definitely not going to read any more from this author. We just don't click. We don't connect. And then I also DNF'd The Immortal City, which gets the award for fastest DNF of all time. It opens up with a demon-possessed man brutally murdering a pregnant woman in a grotesque manner and i was like i ain't here for this dark shit no sir so off that went hello girls are you being nice to each other are you being nice to each other love you editing chanel here so i also read aunt by charmaine paper talk green and john kinsella it was a poetry book wasn't for me but i did read it and i also read her Wicked Marquess by Stacey Reed, which I gave five stars, so I can't believe I totally forgot about that one. It's a historical romance, and I totally wanted to enter into a throuple with the main two characters, so highly recommend. Okay, so the final book I read for my readathon was Waking Romeo, so I finished that. That was an audiobook, it was the only audiobook I listened to for my readathon. I've given it three stars. It's like a future dystopian version of Romeo and Juliet, but very loosely based. Um, so yeah, that was in my readathon vlog. And now any other books I read this week, I'll be reviewing here again. Hello, welcome to the end of my week. Before before I talk about the books, you're probably thinking like, mm, she knew. I wanted to add something that epitomizes sensuality and sexuality into my bedroom. And who better than my original crush? Monica Bellucci. So that's that. I also wanted to showcase my best friend Kate's amazing shawl that she made for moi. It's amazing and it oh, oh I just feel so good. What is it about a shawl? I just I just feel like real witchy. I feel real lady of the manor. So how can I help you? Um it just oh, feels sublime. I love the way it feels on my skin. So thank you, Kate. Your knit witch skills astound me. Now on to the books I finished my week off with. So you might have remembered that I said I was going to read The Eternal Flame, second in a series by Stacey Reed, whose historical romance I had just given five stars to. I like the first book in this fantasy series, or the second book, man. Okay, so it starts off with a woman, you find out she's half demon, and that she's trying to get into the king's castle to do something, and she decides to sneak in as part of his latest harem gift. This king supposedly has a harem of 300 women, the largest in the lands, and I didn't judge. I thought maybe, maybe he's actually saving women, and it's not like it seems. I should have judged. So she goes in there, he's seeing all his new women, sees her and is like, put her straight in my bedroom. So she goes up there, he walks in and he's like, take off all of your clothes. At this point, she internally is shocked. She's like, does he expect me to have sex with him immediately? You find out she's a virgin. You find out that she has never kissed anybody. And you find out that her half demon looks at the king and goes, he's our mate. 
And she's like, okay, keep that on the down low. I'm like, Jesus, a lot is happening in the first like couple of pages of this book. He then proceeds to come over and finger bang her with two fingers and he discovers she's still intact. And she's like, yes, I am. And then he continues finger banging her and she says like, hey, can you stop? He's like, what, why? She said, because I don't like the way that feels. And then he starts ranting, you're my whore, you're in my harem, it's your job to pleasure me, I will do whatever I want with you. And then he sticks three fingers inside her. And at this point, I was out, I was out. Look, everyone's got their kinks, everyone's got their fantasy, their romance that they wanna read in books, escapism. No judgment, man, no judgment. But for me, this was not my jam. I'm very heavy into consent, even in my fictional relationships. And I could not continue to read about this dude. I did not like him. Did he bang all the women in his home? Yes, he was. He was banging all of them. That's that's who he is. I was just shocked because it was such a departure from her other books. But anyway, I um, quickly didn't have that. And then I started The Cloisters because I figured, well, this has got to be a safe option. And it was because it was boring as watching paint dry. It was the dullest book. So you start with a woman. It's a dark academia book going to The Cloisters, which I think is a real place in, in New York to study art or do something to do with art. She meets a bunch of sketchy people. Other people who work there are like, Anne, be careful. These people aren't good people. Well, what do you mean? They, bad things happen around them, but they seem so nice. And it's that kind of vibe. Um, murders go down. They're also trying to find the original tarot deck from Italy. And look, I'm a bitch who loves tarot. I love tarot so much, I made a whole YouTube channel on it. But these people, they were too obsessed with it. This is what they were like with this tarot. So they finally found like, you know, all these cards from this original deck and a woman goes to do a spread for her other female colleague and the female colleague is like, no, you better not. But why? Because whatever cards you put down, that will be my future. And I don't want the tarot to decide my future. And I'm like, that's not exactly how it works, but okay. And like the, the meanings they were attributing to the tarot cards were a bit odd. So I hope this is no one's first introduction to tarot because it's weird as shit. So I kept thinking too, there'd be some magical realism because of how much emphasis they were placing upon the tarot determining their future. But no, there is no magical realism in this. It's not, it's just contemporary and just, you know, a bunch of weird people, but it just nothing really, I would say nothing really happens, but even the shocking things that happen are boring. And Anne is as bland as Anne from Arrested Development. She has zero personality. Even when she did these shocking acts, I was yawning. I'm like, Anne, there is nothing you could do at this point that's even gonna make me quirk an eyebrow because I am just so bored with this book. So I've given it 2.5 stars. If you wanna read Dark Academia, go for Babel, go for The Secret History. There's a million other books you can read. I don't really get the point of this book. It's not magic. It's, it's, not, it's not anything interesting. The only thing I got from it was I maybe want to visit the cloisters when I go to New York. So there is that, okay. Maybe the setting is the best part of this book. But I ended this week on a bit of a fizzle instead of a bang like I was hoping, but I am mad about it because I read so many books this week and I read some five star books and I had a great time. So this was a really fun week. I have like really knocked my to reads list way down. Yay for me, I'm like getting through it. But yeah, that's everything that I read this week. I hope that wherever you are, you are having an enchanting morning, afternoon or evening. And as always, stay wild, Star Child.